Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about how to run Nudge Elastic Band or NEB simulation using LAMPS. Uh, so we're going to use reactive force field first to generate the initial and final configuration and then we're going to use uh, NEB simulation to plot uh, the reaction uh, path or the energy as a function of reaction coordinate. Okay, so the first thing is we have to run the, react the reactive force field. The input file uh, for the reactive force field is as follows. So we have uh, the common sections, and the units, dimension, boundary, the atom style, uh, region. So we can generate um, uh, two regions for uh, bottom that we fix the atoms and for the rest of the simulation where atoms are moving. Okay, uh, then after that, we're we gonna read the data for slab and for water and P4. We're gonna generate some groups. Okay, so the bottom group and the water and P4 group. These are the peristyles for the reactive force field. And then uh, these are the setting for near neighbor list. Uh, we run the NVT first, then reactive force field, and then we set the zero for all atoms at the bottom. Uh, the uh, electric field is applied through this line and then this is the time step minimization um, printing the thermodynamic variables and then and the dump command so this is the first difference uh, from a normal way of running reactive force field in here we only generate uh, the uh, dump file or the, or the trajectory files using the index, the type, x, y, z. So these are Cartesian coordinates. If you don't do that, and if you do this way, then the coordinates will be scale coordinates. We cannot use scale coordinates in NEP simulation. Because of that, and to save, uh, to save space, we only run simulation and uh, recording the trajectory using this format. Again, this is the ID, the type, and then x, y, z in Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so now we're going to go to a run command. Let's say we want to uh, plot the reaction path between uh, time step 2000 and let's say uh, 2300. So the first or the initial configuration will be right at about 2000. So we run it for 2000, then we store the data this way. So the right data uh, will give us the initial configuration for the NEP simulation. After that, we're going to continue the simulation for another, let's say, 10,000 or 1,000, um, from which we're going to extract uh, the time step 2300. So this is, this is the second difference uh, from normal way of running the reactive force field. We have to store the initial configuration for NEP. So the first difference is the dump, and then the second difference is the right data. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, we only write the data for initial configuration. For final configuration, we use the trajectory file that we generate here later. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run um, the reactive force field for which I have a bash file. So we run it using normal uh, way of running a reactive force field. Okay, so we run this on one core, we remove all the simulate files. Now let's look at the input file for NIP simulation. So the input file for NEP simulation is very similar to the input file for the reactive force field with only a few differences. So I'm going to go over the differences. The, the section is the same, the, the, the top section of the input file, the regions are the same. So we're going to introduce, uh, <clears throat> well, we have to comment out all the read data from the reactive force field input file. We add uh, the read data, the initial configuration. Uh, so this is the first difference in NEB input file. Okay, so we read the initial configuration instead of reading the slab or or water or P4 data. The second difference is we're going to introduce a new group called NIP atoms. So this NIP atoms um, uh, include all atoms except those that are frozen at the bottom. So those frozen at the bottom, we call them bottom group before in the reactive force field input file. Now we subtract those bottom atoms from all atoms. So bottom subtracted from all 
will give us the NIB atoms. So these are pretty much moving atoms in our simulation. And we're going to do the reactive, we're going to do the uh, reaction path for the moving atoms. Okay, so pair styles as before, we don't change them. Uh, neighbor list is as before, we don't change them. All the fixes are as before, we don't change them with the electric field and everything. So these are exactly like the um, reactive force field simulation. Uh, <clears throat> minimization is as before. This is actually the third difference. So we're going to now add a new fix right after minimization. And this fix is for nib atoms. So we're going to say uh, we're going to use the nib atoms to generate the reaction coordinate and reaction path using this command. So there's a nib simulation with the spring constant of 1. We need parallel simulation for different um, replicas. And then uh, we use the ideal style. Okay, so this is the third difference. The fourth difference is uh, in the NIP simulation, we have to use the min style uh, type minimization. Okay, so the minimization command is as before, but we add this min style after the fix, uh, after this new fix. Okay, uh, we're going to comment out all the dumps. So this is another change. Uh, we're going to come out, comment out all other runs. So we don't have any run anymore in the NIP simulation. We only include this last line. And that is, uh, we are providing the final configuration in this file. Okay, so we're going to print out some variables in default format, and these are some other parameters for NIP simulation. Now I'm going to talk about how to generate this NIP final configuration. So for NIP final configuration, uh, we have to look at the uh, lamps trajectory file from the reactive force field. So this is the, this is the trajectory file that we generated uh, with the index type and then X, Y, Z in um, Cartesian coordinate. So we don't have to only extract the frame that we want or the time step that we want. So let's say that there is uh, 23 or the time step of 2300. So we're going to go to 2300 and grab that block and save it as a different file. So I'm going to search for uh, 2300. This is the time step of 2300 and all I'm going to do is I'm going to select only this block, the, um, the index type XYZ Okay, then I'm going to strip off the type column. So I'm going to get rid of the type column and then include the rest of it in a separate file, which I call NIP, uh, NIP final configuration. So now let's look at that one. Uh, so this is NIP final. Okay, so I just um, pasted all the XYZ with the index in the first column. Uh, the first line of this file is a comment line. The second line is the number of atoms in this file. And then this is the rest of it. This is only the NIB final configuration. Okay. We extract it from the trajectory file and we modify the trajectory file where we only save the ID type X, Y, and Z. Okay. That's different from a normal generating trajectory file where the coordinates are scaled. These are Cartesian coordinates. There's a, these are not scaled coordinates. Uh, when once we uh, grab that block from the trajectory file, we got rid of the type column. So this configuration file doesn't have the type. It's just the index X, Y, Z. Now we're going to go ahead and run the Nudge Elastic Band Simulation. So I have a bash file for that one too. Let's take a look at that one. Okay, so uh, first we're going to remove some old um, log files. Uh, this is the command that we have to run to, to basically get the uh, nodular elastic band output. We have to run it in parallel. We cannot run NIP simulation on one core. It has to be multiple cores, and the number of cores will tell us how many points along the reaction path we're going to have. If I use 10 cores here, I'm going to have 10 points along the reaction path. If I use 15 cores, I'm going to have 15 points along the reaction path. We didn't say how many points along the reaction path we're going to have in the input file for the NEP simulation. And that is a very tricky part of it. We have to define the number of points here in the run command. Okay, so this is going to be the number of points along the reaction path. Uh, another thing we have to do is this partition 10, 10 by 1. So this is the number of cores, and I think this is the number of threads. Even if you have like four cores, you can still run this on 10 or 20 cores. This is uh, interesting and uh, I think uh, useful to know. Okay, and uh, the input will be the input for the NIP simulation. After that, I'm going to remove all the simulate large files. After running NIP, 
which takes only about you know 10 to 15 minutes you're going to see a bunch of files in our directory i ran i ran this on 10 cores so that's why i get 10 log files from 0 to 9. the file that we're going to be looking at is this log lamps if i look at that it has two blocks uh, the the uh, the information that we need actually is hidden in this last line so we're going to load this in any software like python or matlab or whatever and plot the reaction uh, energy or the potential energy as a function of reaction coordinate and those inform well those pieces of information are hidden in this last line to do that we have to get rid of the header from the first block and then the header from the second block once you do that then you can pretty much upload this as an array or a matrix in python or matlab once we do that we're going to go to the last line here and then extract the last 10 pairs 10 pairs because we have 10 points along the reaction path every point has a reaction energy or the potential energy and the reaction coordinate so every point contributes two column two columns in this file overall is going to be 20 columns we're going to look at the last 20 columns of this file so I've done that in MATLAB. This is um, that array or that matrix. Okay, so we're going to go to the last 10 columns. Uh, I'm sorry, last 10 pairs of columns or the last 20 columns. Um, and we're going to be looking at the last row of this. So the last row reads like this. Uh, the last pair uh, is the uh, reaction coordinate, which is 1, and then the potential energy at that reaction coordinate. By the way, these are the normalized reaction coordinate, which vary uh, from uh, 0 to 1. The next to the last pair is, so this is the reaction coordinate. Again, this is the potential energy. Reaction coordinate, potential energy, and, and so forth. So I have to go back and just grab the last 10 columns. So if you go ahead and, and plot the last uh, uh, 20 columns, which is uh, 10, uh, 10 reaction coordinates and 10 energies. So total is going to be 20 numbers. If you plot those, so you get 10 points, and I've done that before. I can show you what you get. Um, okay. So this is what you get. For 10 points, uh, the vertical axis is going to be the reaction or the potential energy. The horizontal axis is going to be the reaction coordinate from 0 to 1. And this shows a thermodynamic favorable reaction because the reaction energy goes down so that means this is a favorable dissociation for fluorine in fact i was looking at dissociation of this fluorine uh, in the presence of the electric field okay so uh, with that i think you should be able to run a reactive force field and then uh, neb simulation to plot the potential energy as a function of reaction coordinate uh, thank you so much for watching